Okay. Uh, very good evening uh, to all dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we thank our Lord for giving the eternal opportunity to study his wonderful words of life. Uh, so, last uh, uh, few weeks, uh, we have seen his consecration. Uh, we have been seeing uh, some of the classes. So, so today, we are going to see the subject called as Jubilee. We all know and we all have heard about Jubilee. In the world, there are different types of Jubilee. Silver Jubilee, Golden Jubilee, Platinum Jubilee and uh, 100 years the Diamond Jubilee. Now, where did this the Jubilee uh, word come? If you see, it is actually come from the Bible. So, Bible speaks about Jubilee. But the uh, Bible doesn't speak about so many jubilees, uh, but it speaks about only one jubilee, that is uh, 25 years uh, jubilee. So let us read that verse in uh, Leviticus 25, 11. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read? Yes, brother. Okay. A jubilee shall that 50th year be unto you, ye shall not, so neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy wine understood. Underst. Oh, thank you, brother. So, sorry, I, I uh, apologize for saying it's 25 years. It's 50 years. Okay. So, once in 50 years, uh, there was a grand jubilee that was celebrated in Israel. So, there's only one jubilee that is mentioned, that is uh, every 50 years, uh, so when God gave the law to the people of Israel, he had given several laws. And one of the law was uh, the law of uh, Sabbath, that uh, they have to work for six days uh, and they have to rest for uh, seven days. So today we see that uh, the Sabbath day is actually the Saturday. So in Nepal, uh, you people in Nepal are actually following the Sabbath, which is written in the Bible. Okay, the seventh day that uh, they have to work for six days and seventh day they have to take rest. So, this was uh, a Sabbath and if anybody worked in the Sabbath, they were supposed to be put to death. Let us read Exodus 31.15. Uh, Exodus 31.15. Munna sister, can you read? Six days may work be done, but in the seventh uh, is the Sabbath of rest holy to the Lord, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Very good. Sir. So, anybody who works on the Sabbath day, he was supposed to be put to death. So, similarly, once, uh, once what happened uh, during the days of Moses, uh, you see, when they were in the wilderness, uh, once, uh, during the Sabbath, a man went to pick sticks, uh, you see, and uh, immediately the people complained to that a man, how he worked uh, on the seventh day, and Moses called him, and uh, Moses told him that he should be put to death, and everybody stoned him and put to death. You see, this incident is given in uh, Numbers 15, chapter 32 to 36. You can read it later. Okay. But here we see why this person was put to death. You see, you see that uh, why Sabbath was so strictly followed. But we see Jesus that though he worked on the Sabbath, he was never punished. He was never stoned to death. But here the Pharisees and Sadducees, they try to catch hold of Jesus in the Sabbath matter and try to put him to death as the same way we see Moses put that man to death. Okay, uh, let us read Luke 6 chapter 6 verse. Luke 6, 6 to 10. Uh, somebody can read? Okay, brother, I will read. Okay. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and the taught and taught there was a man whose, whose right hand was withered and the scribes and Pharisees watched him whether he would heal on the hill on Sabbath day that they might find a accusation against him, but he knew their thoughts see? and said Yeah, thank you, brother. So here we see Jesus knew the thoughts. They were supposed to catch Jesus because he was healing on the Sabbath. Now why did uh, 
Jesus healed on the Sabbath uh, when there was no work to be done on the Sabbath. Uh, and why was not Jesus stoned? Uh, you see? So similarly, such incident is also mentioned in Luke 13, chapter verse 14 to 15. Here, Jesus gives the reason. So what actually has to be done in Sabbath? Uh, does it mean that there should be no work at all? Nothing should be done? Or just to sit uh, bluntly like that only? So what actually can be done on the Sabbath? Uh, let us read Luke 13, chapter 14 to 15, brother. Uh, Rob, sister, you can read. You're there. Okay. Yes, brother. Ah, okay. Luke 13, 14 and 15. Yeah. 14 and 15. And the ruler of the... Uh, Sine, what is the word? Here? Synagogue. Synagogue answered with indi, indignation uh, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There, uh, there are six days in which men um, out to work in them before, before come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. Continue. The Lord, the Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, uh, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox and his um, ass from the stall and lead him away to uh, watering. See, here Jesus tells about uh, some things that are done on the Sabbath. See, the Pharisees and Sadducees came uh, and tried to, you see, pick some, uh, you see, accusation against Jesus. But Jesus clarifies, uh, if your uh, ass is the, you see, or ox is there, uh, won't you lead that, uh, you see, for watering uh, on the Sabbath? Or else he gives one more example, whether if your uh, ox is fallen, you see, uh, won't you take, uh, you see, the uh, help and uh, pick the ass that is fallen on the Sabbath day? That means here Jesus was trying to say that the good things uh, are supposed to be done on the Sabbath. That means it is not that no work should be done on Sabbath. Work can be done. That what work has to be done and what work not has to be done was, uh, you see, clearly to be defined Hence, uh, like for example, if a man uh, was uh, supposed to eat on the Sabbath, he was really you see, permitted to eat on the uh, Sabbath and do many things uh, like uh, watering, uh, brush the teeth, the take bath, everything. It was not uh, that uh, they should not do anything. Hence, uh, we also read uh, in Mark 2nd chapter 20, uh, 23 to 28, where Jesus was plucking the grains. Uh, even at that time, you see, uh, the Pharisees came and accused him. There also, Jesus gave them the clarity that the good things can be done on the Sabbath. And ultimately, Jesus gives one important clarification. So let us read only that verse. Mark 2nd chapter, verse 28. Mark 2, 28. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Mark 2, 28? Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Very good. You see, the, the Son of Man is a Lord also of the Sabbath. Just read one verse before, brother, 27. Twenty-seven. Mm. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Very good. See, it clearly says the Sabbath was made for men. Not that man was particularly created for the Sabbath. So what does it mean? That means Sabbath is created for the benefit of man. Not that man is created for the Sabbath that he should not work anything. He should simply sit. No. You see, man was never created for the Sabbath. But Sabbath was, you see, implemented. You see, 
it was uh, implemented in the lord for the benefit of man and uh, you see jesus clearly mentions the son of man is the lord of the sabbath you see so what was done in the sabbath if you see actually six days were permitted for the people of israel to work but on the seventh day that is the sabbath day all the entire congregation of israel they were supposed to be gathered at the tabernacle when the tabernacle was there in the wilderness or else when the synagogue was there they had to gather in the synagogue and the entire law all the 606 laws was supposed to be you see taught read you see to the people of israel why so that in six days they might have a tendency to forget the law but when they are reminded again and again on the seventh day you see so they shall benefit of it and they'll remind the law you see remember the law and try to keep the law you see so that was the purpose of lord giving the sabbath not that they should not do any work at all but they had to spend time you see meditating in hearing the law read acts 13:27 Munna sister, can you read Acts thirteen twenty seven? For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor heard the voices of the prophet, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. Ah, you see, huh? What does he say? Huh? The voices of the prophets which are read every sabbath so every sabbath you see the law was read to them the prophets and the law everything you see so that was the purpose of the sabbath you see but unfortunately you know when moses uh, gave the decree to kill that person actually what the person was doing uh, instead of uh, you see sitting and listening to the law on the sabbath day he went uh, to do the natural things what natural things uh? it was not the natural uh, you see things which are permitted to do on the law you see on the sabbath but the violation of the sabbath that means uh, he was picking the sticks which he actually picked uh, all the six days also that means uh, the six days what he worked uh, for his uh, survival that was not permitted uh, to do on the sabbath uh, hence that man when he worked the same thing on the seventh day the sabbath day that matter was brought to moses and moses inquired of the law and the inquired of the god and god told to stone him to death so the six days what man was doing for their survival keep it in mind for their survival was not permitted to do on the sabbath hence they were killed okay now if you see there was one tribe in uh, israel who always worked who never had any leave at all now who is that uh, tribe if you see it was a tribe of the levi you see the levites were never given any land their duty was always to serve the lord in the tabernacle the priest and the high priest they never had any leave you see even on the sabbath they were supposed to continuously work therefore you know who is the anti typical priest and jesus christ is the anti typical priest hence uh, jesus was permitted to work every day for the lord hence uh, when he was plucking the grains what did jesus say you see jesus said you see uh, not that man was made for the sabbath sabbath is made for the benefit of man hence son of man that is jesus He is the Lord of the Sabbath because he is the anti-typical high priest. Okay, now with this is the background of the Sabbath. Okay, now similarly one more law was given to the people of Israel. You see, now just now we read the law about six days and one day. Similarly, there is a law in years. Six years they had to work. Seventh year they have to rest. You see, let us read Leviticus twenty-five two to four. Joel Budar, can you read Leviticus twenty-five two to four? Speak unto unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come 
into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a suburb unto the Lord. Six, six year thou shalt sow thy field, and six year thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor, nor prune thy vineyard. See? So, God told six years you will work, but seventh year you should uh, give rest for the land. Uh, you know, actually, if this is practically implemented in all over the world, the land would give beautiful fruits. You see, hence God told six years, uh, you need to work, but seventh year you should never work, you should give rest. So, so what about the food? Uh? God had promised people of Israel that he would bless the people of Israel in sixth year so much that uh, that fruit shall come for seventh year as well as the eighth year until they pick up the new fruits in the ninth year. You see, so it will come simultaneously for three years. That is given in verse 21 22. No need to read. Please note it down. Okay. So that was the blessing which God had given to Israel. Now, God told, multiply the Sabbath years into Sabbath years. That means seven years into seven years. You will get... Uh, you see, 49 years. And the 50th year that is going to come to you, that is going to be a grand jubilee. And even in that 50th year, you see, nobody should work. So that was the law of the jubilee. Now, what was supposed to be done on the law of the jubilee on that particular year? Let us read um, Leviticus 25th chapter, verse 8 to 10. Leviticus 25th chapter, verse 8 to 10. Gopal brother, can you read? Uh, 8 to 10, brother, right? Hmm. And thou shalt number seven Sabbath of years unto thee, seven times seven years, and the space of the seven Sabbath of years shall be unto, the, unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land, and ye shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you. And ye shall return every man unto his possession, and yet, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Very good. So here, you see, what was to be done on the Sabbath was, first they had to blow the trumpet of the Jubilee. And next thing, it was to be treated as a very holy year. And in that year, Whoever was uh, sold as a slave, they had to return back to their home and they had to return all their possessions. What is this returning of the possession and returning of them? You see, usually when we have uh, any financial problem, we take loan, no? You see, so similarly, this was also permitted in Israel, you see, without uh, giving any interest uh, amount, you see, taking... Uh, lot of interest percentages. No? Now, if we have any problem, if you go to any, you see, pawnbroker, what they will do? They will squeeze us a lot of percentage, oh, 12%, 13%. Uh, you see, 2% two month, two percent per month also they will charge. You see, but uh, God told, you should never take uh, or never give money for interest. No, okay. If you're not going to give any money for interest, now how do you lend the money? You see, that money was lent, you see, based on the Sabbath years. How? You see, when people of Israel entered the land of Canaan, the land, the promised land, the Canaan land, was equally distributed to all the families. Each and every family had equal possession. So everybody were equal. Nobody was rich, nobody was poor. Okay, in case if they fell into any debt, they wanted any money, 
the first thing they have to do was that they have to lend their land. You see, they are not supposed to sell the land. You see, but they are supposed to only lend the land till the jubilee. So, on the jubilee, the land was taken back. So, how was the prices determined of the land? If the jubilee year was very far, you see, the price would be more. But if the jubilee year was very near, the price would be less. They were not supposed to sell the land, but they were to give the land to the person who gives them money. And how would the lender get back the money? He would cultivate from the land and take the fruits thereof and that would be his repayment. But nobody was allowed to sell the land. Remember it clearly. So I'll tell it again after reading this verse. Uh, Leviticus 25 chapter uh, 15 to 16. Leviticus 25, 15 to 16. Uh, kindly, uh, Joel brother, can you read? Leviticus 25, 15 to 16. According to the number of year after years, after the jubilee, thou shall buy of thy neighbor and according unto the number of years of the fruits, he shall sell unto thee, according to the multitude of years, thou shalt increase the price thereof, and according to the fewness of years, thou shalt diminish the price of it. For according to the number of the years of the fruits, that he sell unto thee. Ah, see? Here... If they lend any money based on the land, they had to cultivate from the land and get back that money. They were not supposed to sell that land. Not supposed to even buy the land. Whatever money they had given, you see, they never got back from the person who took it. But how did they get back? Only from uh, fruits which they cultivated. Hence, the price was determined how many years far was the jubilee. The jubilee was very near, the amount lent would be very less. If the jubilee was many years far, the amount lent would be more. Hence, dear brethren, you see, at the end of jubilee, you see, this, uh, what happened? The land actually returned back to the original owner. Wonderful, no? You see, if this was the condition of the entire world, what would happen? At the end of every 50 years, we would all get all our possessions which our you see, forefathers sold. Anyway, this was one condition. But after selling the land, after lending the land, you see, even if a person becomes still more poor, he's not able to sustain his family, he wants more money, the other option was that they have to sell themselves. They have to sell themselves and to work as a servant uh, till the jubilee. You see? So, again, if the jubilee comes, uh, the servants were set free. So, until the jubilee, they can work as servants. This was also in the law. Let us read Leviticus 25, 39 to 41. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Leviticus 25, 39 to 41, brother? Okay. Uh, Roman Minister, you can read. Okay. Muna sister, can you read? Leviticus 25, 39 to 41. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. Read, Amar Brother. Sorry, read. Okay, we have a little problem here. Okay. Uh, and if they, brother, that they will buy the be oxen, Poor and be sold uh, unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a born uh, servant. Too much. Continue. You also? Continue till 41. Okay. But as an uh, hired servant and as a 
he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of jubilee. See, he shall and serve it. till the jubilee. Then after the jubilee, what will happen? Continue. And then shall then then shall be uh, depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family and unto the uh, position of his fathers shall he return. Oh, see, at the end of Julie, what will happen? Everybody shall return back, it seems. Sir. So, more, no more servitude at the Jubilee year. Imagine, dear brethren, see, before the Jubilee, who all will be happy? All the rich will be happy because they all got the land. Many become to their servants. They will become very rich. You see, who all were sad. Uh, all the poor who gave back everything, who lost everything. Uh, they were very sad. But uh, when the Jubilee came, it was turned other side around. All the rich people, they became sad. Why? Because they have to return everything back uh, without even expecting anything. If they were servants, they had to return back the servants. If they were given the land, those lands has to be given back. But who will become happy at that moment? If you see, all the poor who lost everything, they were very, very happy because on the Jubilee, they were supposed to get everything back. Therefore, God said, during the Jubilee year, the first thing you have to do is uh, proclaim liberty by blowing a trumpet. Why blow a trumpet? Imagine, huh? If we want to lend, if we want to give back something to somebody, will anybody give voluntarily, come, come, please, your date is over, please come and take back your money? Nobody would tell. You see, everybody will try to hide. Oh, you come tomorrow, I don't have money today. Oh, my checkbook is over. You please come day after tomorrow. I applied to the checkbook. It will take another 15 days. You see, or else they'll give some mistake in a check. If it returns, they'll come, oh, sorry, it returned. You did not observe. Uh, you come again tomorrow. I'll write the check and give it to you. Or else, uh, I'm out of station. Uh, uh, I can't pay you now. All these excuses will come. Help God told, don't want all these excuses. Blow the trumpet loudly. So that everybody in the streets, everybody in the house, uh, everybody in the city can understand and know that this is the jubilee year. They have to give it back. They have to return it back. Hence, God told, you blow the trumpet. Now, why did God give this law? It was a wonderful law which people of Israel did not even celebrate even one jubilee also. You see, this was the only law which people of Israel never kept even one jubilee also. Not even one. You see, God had told, once you enter the promised land, you have to implement this one. But unfortunately, none of the people of Israel implemented it. Okay. Now, why? Why God gave this jubilee? And how many jubilees did God give you? You see, God had fixed 70 jubilees to Israel. You know, what did God do? God saw the people of Israel never celebrated even one jubilee also. So God punished them 70 years of punishment so that land may rest for 70 years as a jubilee year. Read 2 Chronicles 36, 20 to 21. Uh, Munana sister, can you read 2 Chronicles 36, 20 and 21? And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were servant to him and his son until the reign of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath, to fulfill three score and ten years. Ah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath. Underline. God had fixed, you see, Sabbath for the land. How, how many was it? Seven years. Hence, uh, Israel uh, people were, you see, taken uh, to captivity 70 years and the land was left desolate for 70 years. The land rested. Now, okay. Now, we saw about the Jubilee. You see, about uh, uh, 50 years of Jubilee. Now, what lesson do we have in this one? If you see the brethren, 
50th year. We all know the beautiful, wonderful plan of God. You see, which God has made. You see, huh? what will happen? Huh? We know that uh, everything shall be restored in God's plan. You see, so we know, no? How many days did God create? Tell me, how many days did God create? Creative days in Genesis first chapter. How many days did God create? Nobody knows. Huh? How many days God created? Huh? Or, eh? Seven days. Seven. Huh? Uh, six days God created. Seventh day, he rested. Okay. Rested. Now, what is the period of each creative day? Each creative day was there, no? First day. What is the period? How many hours each day? Tell me. Who is going to tell? How many hours or how many years? Hmm? Any guess? Any suggestion? 7,000. Huh? How much, sister? 7,000. Yes, sister. 7,000 years. You see, each and every creative day is a period of 7,000 years. How? How do you confirm it 7,000 years? See, God created for uh, sixth day. Seventh day, he rested we are living in the seventh day. So last week, brother now clearly taught you the Bible chronology. Hope you all understood. In that one, what you are seeing, from the creation of Adam till Jesus' first advent is 4,128 years. And from then to Jesus' second advent is 6,000 years. 6,000 years plus 7,000 years is the seventh day. If the seventh day is 7,000 years, it clearly means that all the previous six days should be 7,000 years. So each and every creative day is actually a period of 7,000 years. For Almighty God, one day is 7,000 years. For Jesus, one day is 1,000 years. But for Almighty God, it is 7,000 years. So seven creative days, how much it began? Tell me. Seven creative days into 7,000 years, how much? Seven thousand into seven, how much? Forty-nine. Very good. Forty-nine thousand. Forty-nine thousand years. Forty-nine thousand years is the reign of Jesus Christ, and the thousand years which comes after the reign of Jesus Christ, the ages to come, is the great grand jubilee where God is going to, you see, bless all the people. All things shall be restored back. Everybody will get their land back. Blessings upon blessings. Uh, that is what the Bible says. Read Acts 3.21. Acts 3.21. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Acts 3.21? Acts 3.21. Uh, mm. Okay. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of uh, restitutions of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Ah, you see, Jesus should be in heaven till when? Till the times of restoration come. When that time comes, Jesus should return from heaven, it seems. Now, if Jesus has returned, that clearly means that the restitution work. Time has already begun. So we are living in that time only. You see? So what all did Adam lose? You see? Adam was cast out from the presence of God. You see? Huh? So Jesus came and sacrificed his life so that man may get back that blessing. Hence Jesus died as a world savior to save the entire man, dear brethren. So what all things will be restored in God's kingdom, if you see, first man lost was his eternal life. That eternal life will be given back to man. How? You see, first thing is going to happen is the resurrection of the dead. The dead came into the world. Death passed upon everybody. All are dying. But in Christ's kingdom, what will happen? All the dead will 
come back to life. Restoration in Jubilee. Once the trumpet was blown, all things were returned back. So Adam went to death. You see, similarly, from dead, all the persons will come back to life. Read John 5.28. John 5.28. Uh, Romy sister, can you read John 5.28? Okay, brother. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Mm, and come forth. All that are in the graves, they will come forth. Read 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 21 and 22 also, sister. 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 21 and 22. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection for the for the death of the dead. Mm. Continue. For as in all, as in Adam, Adam of I, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Ah, you see. For in Adam all die, in Christ all shall be made alive. So, in Christ's kingdom, when everybody are resurrected, they will be coming back to life on the same earth. So, not only that one. Now, what is happening? Age is running forward, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60. But in Christ's kingdom, what will happen? What is they died? They will come back in the same age, but the age will return backwards. The age will run backwards from 60 to 50, 50 to 40, 40 to 30. Man will come back to the perfect age. In Jubilee, what happened? Everything was written back now. Even man's original beauty, even man's original age shall be returned because Adam was created as a perfect human being. He was never created as a small baby. Dear brethren, so in Christ's kingdom, you see, age will return back. Read Job 33.24. Job 33.24. Joel, brother, can you read? Then he is gracious unto him, unto him and said, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. See, he shall return to the days of his youth. His flesh shall be fresher than a child is himself. And all the people will be resurrected. They will be so beautiful. It will be like a fresher than a child. Like how Lulia is there. So soft. Everybody's skin will be like that is himself. That is going to happen. Restoration back. Return back to the original which God had created man. So in Christ, in Christ kingdom, will there be any hospital? No. Adam never fell sick. There was no hospital in Garden of Eden when God created. Similarly, there will be no sickness in God's kingdom. Read Isaiah 33.24. Isaiah 33.24. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read Isaiah 33.24? Sure, brother. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Ah, the people will not say, I am sick. Because... Their iniquity sins will be forgiven. Okay. Now what will be what else will be restored? All the animals and human beings were pure vegetarian. Correct? No? We are seen in the first world class. Remember, similarly, this condition also will be restored in God's kingdom. All the animals will eat pure vegetarian. There won't be any carnivorous at all. All the carnivorous animal will be restored back to original condition that was there in Garden of Eden. Read Isaiah 11, 6-9. Munna sister, can you read Isaiah 11, 6-9? The wolf also shall deal with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion, and fattening together 
and a little child shall lead them, and the cow and the uh, bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Me? And the lion shall eat straw like an ox. A little child shall lead them. Continue, sir. Huh? And the stocking child shall play on the hole of the ass, and the wind child shall put his hand on the uh, cock trice then. And this shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Ah, they shall not hurt nor destroy in God's kingdom. Nobody shall hurt, nobody shall destroy everything. Everybody shall be blessed. That is restoration. You see, Adam was with animals. None of the animals did harm anybody. Similarly, it will be restored in Christ's kingdom. Not only that one, dear brethren, you see, huh, the beautiful Edenic condition of this beautiful earth shall be restored back to this earth. How garden was Eden was there? Beautiful, no? Same condition, each and every place will be restored. Okay, now in Garden of Eden, you see, Adam had a house, no? Eden Garden, Garden itself for his house. In Christ's kingdom, will that home be restored? Yes. Remember during the Jubilee, whatever they have sold, they have to take it back. They have sold the houses. They have to restore back. Similarly, mankind will get house. Each and every person will have a own house. Isaiah 65, 21 and 22. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read Isaiah 65, 21 and 22? Okay, brother. And they shall build the houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build, and another inha inhabit. They shall not plant, and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. See, they shall plant, and not other eat. They shall plant and eat the fruit thereof. They shall build and inhabit there. No rented houses. Only own houses. God shall wipe each and every tears. Imagine the jubilee. You see when the trumpet was blown. You see all the tears uh, were wiped. All the slaves were set free. What enjoyment. What uh, you see wonderful thing. This is going to happen in Christ kingdom. You see everybody's eyes shall be wiped. Uh, all tears shall be wiped. Revelation 21.4 uh, Romy sister, can you read Revelation 21 4? And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, uh, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the Former things are passed away. Former things are passed away. No more pain. Jubilee came. Everything disappeared. Everything. You see. And for the Jubilee to begin, what was supposed to be done? First thing is blow the trumpet. So immediately, as we see in the Bible, that as Jesus returns, you see, he returns with a trumpet. We have seen about seven trumpets in the Bible. See, what happens in Jesus' second coming? First Thessalonians 4.16. 1 Thessalonians 4.16. Uh, Amar brother, can you read 1 Thessalonians 4.16? Okay. 4.16. Hmm. For the Lord himself shall descend from, from heaven with a shout with the voice of the uh, archangel, archangel hmm. and which the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. See, trump of God. Trumpet of God. We have seen how many trumpets are there in the Bible. You see, seven trumpets. So when Jesus returns, he returns at the seventh trumpet only. So once the seventh trumpet is blown, what happened? 
You see, all things are changed. The government itself is changed. It is transferred from the government of this world to the government of Jesus Christ. Read Revelation 11.15. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read Revelation 11.15? Okay, brother. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the, the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Mm. You see? What happened when seventh angel sounded, trumpet sounded, jubilee trumpet sounded, immediately the kingdoms were transferred to Jesus Christ, dear brother. And hence, you know, what will happen? Huh? Immediately when the jubilee was blown, the trumpet was blown, do you think everybody will be happy? Only one category of people who are supposed to receive back, they will be happy. What about other people? Huh? They will be angry. So similarly, when the seventh trumpet blown, actually the world should be happy because Christ came to rule. But what was the reaction of the world? Read verse 18 also. Uh, Brother Joel, read verse 18, Revelation 11, 18. And the nation were angry and thy wrath is come. See, the nation was angry because God's wrath is come. The nations were never happy because they had to restore everything to Christ. So trumpet was blown. What is this trumpet? Trumpet always in the Bible means, uh, you see, no? truth, uh, proclamation of the truth, uh, understanding of the truth, uh, knowledge of the truth. Hence, we have seen, no? and Jesus returns, what happens? Uh, you see, huh? yeah, knowledge shall increase. Man shall run to and fro. We read now, we are studying the signs of the second coming. You see, one of the signs is increase in knowledge. So, since 1874, we can see, there's a grand and great increase in knowledge. Imagine, we never had so much of technology. We never dreamed that all these things will come within just a few years. This is all the blessings of the Lord. As soon as Jesus came, he brought light. He proclaimed this trumpet. Awareness came to everybody. Read Revelation 18.1. Revelation 18.1. Muna, sister, can you read Revelation 18.1? And after this thing, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth, earth was lightened with his glory. Ah, great angel came from heaven. Because him, what happened? Uh, the earth was lightened, means what? Uh, not that little light came. Jesus is the light. Uh, that means what? Uh, knowledge, awareness, uh, intelligence. Therefore, we read in Dan 12 for the knowledge hell. Increase, man shall run to and fro. So, dear brethren, you see, since the second advent of Jesus, man has realized his rights. And today we can see the people are fighting for the rights all over the places. A lot of revolts, a lot of strike. You see, why? Because man wants to stand for the rights. Imagine, you see, Gaza, Israel, war is there. But what are the people are doing? Not everybody is supporting Israel. But so many people are opposing it. Even the Russia-Ukraine war, not everybody accepting, they're revolting it. Why? Because man realizes it is not good to punish innocent blood. Kill all innocent people. You see, there are strikes, revolt. Now, this awareness was got since when? This boldness, this courage, this awareness, all came because of knowledge. And this started by the blowing of the trumpet since 18. 74. When Jubilee we saw, no? you see, who all were happy became sad. Who all were sad, they became happy. Similarly, now, dear brethren, in the society, there is equality. Everybody are equal. No big, no small. No rich, no poor. Dear brethren, everybody are treated equally. See, Bible says beautifully. Isaiah 24, 1 to 4. Isaiah 24, chapter, verses 1 to 4. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read? Isaiah 24, 1 to 4. Okay, brother. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty. Ah, and make it... The earth empty. Earth means what? Na? Society. God is emptying the society. Then. 
and make it it waste and turn it it upside down upside down upside down means what da? turning ulta now what is there huh? injustice is there only rich are honored poor no recognition but god is slowly changing this one continue brother don't uh, mute i can stay and mute uh. and scatters ab abroad the inhabitants thereof and it shall be as with the people people so with the priest See? as with as with the people so it will be with the priest that means what earlier there was there no priest class people public common people different classes were there no you see huh? in the society there were actually three classes you see who are there the priest class then the labor class and the common man three classes are there now today where is the three classes are no three classes everybody are working <laughs> you see there is no special honor for any priest the gap is gone that is what the bible say it will be the same justice for the common man and the priest continue with her huh? and it shall be as with the people so with the priest as with the servant so with his master ah, as with same justice for the servant and the master if the servant has stolen 10 rupees you see he will get the same punishment if the master has stolen 10 crore rupees he will get the same justice both are put into jail no injustice today. I don't know about Nepal, but India is slowly happening. In the whole world, we can see even Donald Trump was not spared. You see, now also the case is running. You see, he is daily called to the court, uh, appear before court to America president, who oh, world superpower. There is no partiality at all. Then continue with her. Huh? So with her mysteries as with the buyer, so with the no, seller no no, no 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 as with the maid so with the mistress as with the maid means servant what justice is given for the house servant same is given for the house owner also as with the buyer so with the seller you see today there is consumer court if there is any injustice in what products the consumer buy though you will be a very poor man he can lodge a complaint it will be the same justice as with the lender, so with the buyer. As with the usury, so with the giver of the usury. There is no difference at all. The land, the land shall be utterly emptied. The utterly spoiled. For the Lord has spoken it. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. You see, the world languishes and fadeth away. Haughty people of the earth do languish. Big, big shots are brought low. But to the scale of justice. This is jubilee, dear brother. This is what uh, is going to happen. We can see the photos. You see? Huh? What? Uh, Anil, what's his name? Vijay Malia, Nirva Modi, all these people, you know, they are in jail <laughs> You today. You know, there's no injustice in the society. But uh, in the Jubilee, what was there? The joy, happiness. You see, they used to celebrate. God told you to celebrate the Jubilee. The entire year was a celebration. So in thousand years, when all the dead come back to life, there will be celebration, dear brother. And if somebody dies, they will be weeping. No? Imagine if that person comes back to life. All their family, all the relatives will join together to celebrate. That is going to happen in Christ's kingdom. Therefore, Jesus taught us to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is done in heaven. The great grand jubilee which the entire mankind is awaiting where everything will be restored back to life. Dear brethren, God bless these words. Okay? Uh, I'll share uh, the YouTube link. Go through it. Any doubts, any questions? Anybody ask? Uh, you can ask. Anybody, any questions?